Annie Pimentel, Marketing Director at the historic Zaitarian Performing Arts Center, and we invite you to learn a little bit more about our mighty Wurlitzer organ. So the Zaitarian's mighty Wurlitzer organ is here because of the efforts of people over decades, and we are proud to have some of them with us now. We have Ed Warzanowitz, who is the volunteer organist. We have Ken Duffy, who is uh, a historian for uh, organs and the lead reinstaller to bring the Wurlitzer organ back to the Zyterian. And we have Bob Evans, who is the liaison for the Eastern Massachusetts chapter of the American Theater Organ Society. They're going to show us what makes this organ special and tell us some of the history about how this organ was reunited with the Zyterian Performing Arts Center. I'm Ken Duffy and we're about to try to explain to you what this organ is all about. To just play a little bit so we can hear what the organ can do. The organ has nine different voices. The British Go to one okay. yeah. Keep. What do you mean when you say voices? The, uh, the ranks of the organ. Groups, groups of pipes. Yeah, groups of pipes. This organ has, in one chamber, it has the flute, the violin, diapason, violin celeste, and clarinet. The other chamber has a vox humana, which is uh, the voice, the human voice. And then the tibia, the tuba, and then we turned around and added another rank uh, to give the organ a little bit more punch and that is a, uh, we, we didn't, uh, an English horn would have been too much and a French horn would be not enough. So we turned around and got a, an oboe rank and sent it to a pipe maker and the, the sound is between the French horn and the English horn to give the organ a little bit more uh, versatility for uh, concert work because uh, it originally was designed for silent movies. will show us what the tremulants do. Yep. What makes it a theater organ is yep. against what a church organ is. Yep. On and off. Okay, you got trems. Go up here. You get the waver. Now this is off. Yeah. That's the heart of the, the heart of a theater organ is the tibia. 
which church organs really don't have, unless this, they're this tremendously. This one happens to be matched so nicely to the theater. It is really a pleasure to play. Yeah. Everything works, which is always a treat. You know? Oh, yes. <laughs> so, Ken, tell us why these organs are associated with theaters that were built in the vaudeville era. Well, they, uh, they were, it started out with uh, small uh, theaters with a, a uh, silent film. And then when the theaters started growing in size, they went to a piano. And they got bigger again, and they had orchestras. It became very expensive to run a theater. So that's why the theater organ was invented. Between 1915 and 1930, they were the uh, uh, they played for the for the silent movies. This theater started out as a vaudeville house, and then it closed for a while. And when it reopened. They had a, the Willisa was here, and that Willisa, this Willisa, came from the factory, for Willisa factory in 1923. So the pipework of this organ is 97 years old, almost as much as I am. <laughs> well, these, these organs are called a unit orchestra. You know, that's, that, that was Willis's term, and uh, there's a lot of things that go on you don't even realize that all these, uh, what the pipe work is, they put a, f a floor in the organ and the organ is screwed to the floor because if they screwed the, f the, the floor, the theater th floor, and they repossessioned the organs for not paying. They couldn't take it out because it was part of the theater, but if it was sitting by itself, they could take it out. It, uh, but when you stop and think of when these uh, big palaces were built, they were betting that at 25 cents a ticket, they'd make money. And I guess they did. The foot pedals turn around and give the bass for the organ, basically. Uh, basically, this organ has three keyboards, they're called manuals. But when the, when the uh, foot pedals are there, that increases uh, a, another keyboard in a sense. Turn around and demonstrate the thunder pedals. That's a, that's a cymbal. And that's the drums. Snare drum. The bass drum, uh, snare drums, xylophones, actual xylophones, actual chrysoglots. Uh, there's a, we've installed an uh, electronic piano up there just to in, enlarge the sound of the organ. The sound comes from the two chambers that are on the other side. Uh, <clears throat> the organ itself plays the same volume all the time, but there are what we call swell shades, the swell being the sound. And there's like Venetian blinds, vertical, and they, they control the size of so it's like you're taking the stopper out of a bottle. And the farther out you take, the faster, the more uh, volume you get. So are you saying the sound is built right into the walls? You can't turn around and uh, uh, have a rank that turns around and changes its pitch. So they play at the same noise, volume, all the time. But the idea is that when the swell shades open, that lets the sound out. And it depends on how far open you open, how much sound comes out. So we have pipes in the wall. 
walls, organ pipes, but we also have instruments, actual instruments in those same chambers, is that right? That's right. What kinds of instruments are in the wall and can you demonstrate those for us, Ed? Yep, sure. We have what, uh, let's see, chimes is number one, I guess. Get rid of this, get rid of that. Actual, actual chimes, tubular chimes. I just hit the wrong side, hold on. Go for the xylophone. The xylophone. Chris the Glot. Yes, sir. What's a chrysoglot? Chrysoglot is a big word. Uh, a metal vase, like uh, xylophone vase, but they're metal, and they're played with uh, uh, piano uh, uh, hammers that strike. The felt strikes them. They were the, the soft. See. And then the other one. Uh, with the, um, the metal bars with the metal hammers. Uh, Glock or the xylophone? Xy uh, no, not the xylophone. Uh, oh, God. Glockenspiel? Gl Glockenspiel. That's it. Yeah. That's metal bars with metal hammers. And it's actually metal bars being hit by metal hammers. That's yes, right. So. And then. Uh, this one, uh, we also have a piano up there. The amplifier is not on. The amplified piano. There is a computer in the back of this, a very state-of-the-art computer. And I think it's 99 separate artists that can come in and program their own combinations in these white buttons. I mean, I, I do it soft to loud. That's, you know, mm. nothing creative. It's just a... Uh, well, the, the organist hasn't got time when he's playing a, a, a concert to turn around and look and see which stop tap he wants on and off. He's already decided what song he's going to play so he knows what uh, parts of the organ he wants. Mm -hmm. So that turns around and he can push these white buttons underneath here and you'll see this, this, the, the stop tabs move. Yeah, that's what I'm do now. Okay, this is, this is number one. Number two. You, you, you can see the stop tabs move. This is the operation center, that instrument actually. You put it on and off, you program the uh, computer, and if it doesn't go on, you say a few prayers. <laughs> <laughs> this would be flutes, I believe, if I'm lucky and pick the right one. Concert flute. Tribune. Mm -hmm. Okay. 
diaphonic diapason. Where's the tuba? Oh, that thing. The tuba. Oh, yeah. Where is it? It's got to be red. <laughs> tuba horn. Oh, yeah. Tell us about that 10 year window where you brought the organ back and some of the technical hurdles you had to overcome to get this organ to work in the theater? Originally, the wiring for the organ from the console to the chambers was about 700 wires. And they were what you call cotton uh, wrapped wires. And you can't bring an organ back because as far as the, the national code, uh, electrical code for theaters is concerned, that big cable is a no-no. So we had to turn around and go to a, a, a console, uh, uh, I'm trying to think of the word. But anyway, the, we reduced the wiring through computers to a 50 wire telephone cable and it goes from the console to the chamber and then you go back in the chambers to the 700 wires where they go uh, that was one thing the other thing was that the blower for the organ was a seven and a half horsepower blower that was under the stage and that became uh, not available, the space didn't come out available to us. So we had to turn around and build a, uh, a blower room on top of the chambers. That meant we had to go out and get an architect, as somebody that was based, that knew what the, lead, uh, what the, what the rules were for, for in a theater and it had to be soundproof. That alone ate up $27,000. But the, uh, uh, it was one thing after another that we had to overcome to get the organ in here. And it, basically, I suppose it became a labor of love to get it here. And you knew what it could do. And uh, as, when we, originally came in here to take the organ out where they, you can see the difference in, in the seatings where they change. There was a prize fighting ring here and they were, the owners of the theater were doing everything they could to keep the doors open. But uh, it's been a long, long run and uh, I look at it now and uh, it was well worth it. The sound is all behind what you call the walls, but the, in the chambers, there's the, the uh, turn around in most theaters, the organ is split in two, solo and main chambers, on that side and on this side. But we couldn't do that here, no, they could, the original organ couldn't do it because over here is a set of stairs. So we, that, that space is gone. So uh, it's a different sound of the organ all on one side. It doesn't blend. So we did our best to, uh, we uh, tonally, uh, tonally finished the organ so that you wouldn't know that it was all on one side. And the, the Zyterian is uh, 
There isn't a bad seat in the house as far as the sound is concerned. The sound is, especially when the Damascus cloths are around the, 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 the walls to uh, make this sound so it doesn't echo. You mentioned this was a labor of love, but it didn't come cheap. No. Tell me about how you raised the money to bring the organ back. Well, started out with the gentleman in uh, George Grimshaw. In, uh, he originally came from New Bedford. He was retired up in Piedmont, New Hampshire, and he read an article in this local newspaper, the Standard Times, about the organ, you know, how we were trying to get it back and how we could get money. And he donated $25,000 to us if we would raise it dollar for dollar. He'd give a dollar, we'd get a dollar. We figured originally it was probably about thirty-five, forty thousand dollars we could do with this job, bring it back. By the time we got done with all the extraneous things that went on, I'm sitting at a hundred and fifty thousand dollars. And then when we rebuilt this console, this is this is the original console. That was another $27,000 we out and raised. And basically, the organ society owns the organ. The Zeichirian doesn't own the organ. That was done for a reason, because in the 80s, and the, the, the performing arts center was just starting, we didn't know whether it was going to be a going proposition, and if they went if they went belly up, and they owned the organ, we'd lose it. But luck, luckily, Zaitirian is a going concern, and a very good one, and the organ is playable. This is a proud legacy to decades of work. What are your hopes for the organ and organs in general going forward in time? You just hope that it keeps on going. Uh, uh, a lot of times when, you, when you're having a, a, a concert here and you turn around and you look at the, the audience and you think, gee, it must be snowing out. Oh no, that's all white-haired people. <laughs> think about the importance of keeping the past alive through elements like the organ? Well, it's, it's basically, it's, it's, uh, there's less and less theaters that have organs, or if they do, it's less and less that it'll be used. I'm sure that the, uh, the children, when they when we do the children's shows here, they certainly enjoy it, that's for sure. Especially when you play something that the children know and they sing along with you. And uh, that, that's, that's a good feeling. Thanks for joining us and hearing about the amazing history of the Zaitarian Performing Arts Center and a piece of our theater that is so special, the mighty Wurlitzer organ. It took many people much time and effort and love of heart to bring this treasure back to our theater and we are so grateful for everything that they've contributed and the fact that it makes this amazing place even that much more special so learn more about the Zyterian at Zyterian.org and we'll be happy to see you again soon